Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and with the release of iOS 18, Apple added a bunch of new features. And the good news is all of the iOS 17 supported devices are on iOS 18 as well. But there's a catch just like there is every year where certain older devices don't support all of the latest features. So I thought we'd go over every feature that won't work on your older iPhones. Now the first one you're probably already familiar with, Apple Intelligence. While this is not yet available as far as developer testing or beta testing, it is coming a little bit later and coming to everyone later this fall. Unfortunately, it requires an iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max or an iPad or Mac with an M1 processor. None of the other phones or devices without those specifications will actually get Apple intelligence. Now, whether or not they actually change Siri for older devices is unknown as far as the visual way it looks, but a lot of features are still available on the older devices. So I thought we'd go over them one by one. With the introduction of all the iPhone 14 models, Apple introduced SOS via satellite that allows you to communicate when you're not in an area with signal or you don't have Wi-Fi, and it can help you get out of an emergency. This year, they actually introduced a new feature called Messages via Satellite. Because of hardware limitations, that feature is limited to iPhone 14 and iPhone 15 models, and iPhone 16 models once they release. That's due to the overall antenna and technology built into the phone, so of course older devices won't have that, but the older devices that don't have SOS via Satellite won't have Messages via Satellite either. Now Notes gets a new update with live transcriptions, and the great news is this is coming to most devices. If we go into Notes, and if we go to the little paper clip or attachment, and go to Record Audio, we now have the new option for transcriptions. This is available to the iPhone 12 and later. It does not require Apple intelligence, and we can just hit Record and then start transcribing in real time and record directly into Notes. So it's great that they're actually bringing this, and it does not require Apple intelligence. Another feature that doesn't require Apple intelligence, but again is limited, has to do with the TV app. If we go into the TV app, let me find it here, and within TV, if we're watching a movie or TV show or maybe WWDC 24, tap the bottom three dots for the menu, go to audio, and we have enhanced dialogue. Under enhanced dialogue, we have the option to boost the overall dialogue, enhance it, or turn it off. Also, when we jump back, it will automatically turn on closed captioning to show us what we may have missed, and then we can read it back. The great news is, again, this does not require Apple intelligence, but that will be coming on the iPhone 11 and later. Unfortunately, it won't be on the iPhone XS, XS Max, or XR. It should be on the iPhone 11, though. Another feature that was introduced actually a little bit before WWDC is for accessibility, and it's eye tracking. If we go into settings, and then we go back to accessibility, let me turn on dark mode here, and we go back, go to accessibility, you'll see we have a new option as we scroll down to actually use our eyes for tracking. This feature is actually limited, so if we turn this on and you've already set it up, you can set it up by following the dot around your screen, and once you've set it up, the great thing is you can use your eyes just to move around the screen. So as I look, wherever I'm looking on the screen, it actually is going to. Now, this feature, again, is limited to specific devices due to the technology in them. It's limited to the iPhone 12 series models and later, and is also carried over to the iPhone SE third generation. This could be a chipset limitation, maybe RAM, or just processing power overall. Another accessibility feature that's limited to iPhone 12 and later has to do with music haptics. This is a new feature that will vibrate the phone based on what you're listening to. So this sometimes doesn't show up properly and it doesn't seem to be working just yet properly when you're actually using it on your device. But if we go over into music haptics, we'll just search. Sometimes it actually shows up, sometimes it doesn't. You'll see it's not there if I reboot. Now that it's rebooted, if I scroll down, sometimes it shows up and you'll see we have music haptics. For whatever reason, it's not working properly just yet, but once we enable this and we play a sample, it then plays a music sample and you can feel it vibrating back in the phone itself. And you'll see as I swipe back, it disappears. However, if we go into Control Center, you'll see it here as well where it says unavailable. But this feature again is limited to the iPhone 12 and later. 
Now under the home app, we now have a new option. If you're using this maybe with a home device with a lock, if we go into home and maybe you have a lock here for your front door and you want to actually open it just by tapping your phone. Well, if you have an ultra wideband device, you can actually just approach it. There'll be a new option if you have a compatible device to just approach that lock and it will open hands free. That of course requires an ultra wideband chip, which limits it to the iPhone 11 and later. So again, that's due to that specific chipset. There's also one other thing within the home app that's only available in specific areas later this year. If we scroll to the top last year, we got the grid forecast that told us what kind of energy we were using this year. There's a new update that lets you know how much electricity you're using. That's actually shown in a different widget here. If we go into it, we'll press and hold, add a widget and within widgets. If we scroll down, we'll go to home. Under home, if we scroll over, you'll see that we have the option for electricity usage. Now, again, these may not be available yet because this is an early feature, but according to Apple, these are available to Pacific gas and electric customers who have residential electrical service, including areas served by community choice aggregators. Users must be the utility account owner or authorized user of the utility account. So it looks like you'll be able to tie this directly to your power company and then see more information about it. That will only be be available pretty much in the West coast of the United States, maybe California and a few other States, maybe more will join in, but currently it's only available in those specific areas. And so the good news is that's everything that's not available to older devices, all of the customization, all of the changes to the control center, everything I've shown in my what's new video is included on all the older devices with the exception of the few things I mentioned here. Most of those seem like chipset limitations with the exception of maybe Apple intelligence. Quite a few people aren't happy that it's only 15 pro and 15 pro max. You would think at least the iPhone 15 would be supported, but either way it's not. So hopefully that helps you out. Understand what specific features are supported on older devices. And if you found anything different or any new features, I haven't mentioned in other videos. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.